Hello folks, we've got an exciting game for you here today of Forged Alliance. Uh, this is of course Forged Alliance Forever and it's a 3v3 ladder game on a generated map, a Noroxis map. Uh, we can see there's a bit of water in the corners but uh, I don't think that's really going to be significant in this game. Uh, not a lot of mass, says Funkoff already. Um, I'm not really sure that's true. There's uh, there's five mixes each at the starting um, places, and there's uh, a couple more formations for each team, and a few spread out. Uh, not a lot of reclaim, though. Do have to say that um, these areas here. Uh, this is of course uh, mirrored. Um, these areas having the the most reclaim. Uh, not a lot in the center, so. Definitely uh, players will be sticking to themselves a bit to get that reclaim and then branching out to try and get these mexes on either side of the map. But who's playing this game today? So on the north side, we have three players, three different races, uh, all going first land, which is pretty meta these days. Uh, we have It's Not Me in the far north, who's playing as Cybron. We have No Red For You, who's playing as UEF. In the front position, and then we have Funkoff, who's behind them. You might call this the air slot. It's not super protected, though, but uh, they are playing as Seraphim. And uh, pretty conventional start coming out of all three players here. Meanwhile, on the south, or the bottom left corner of this map, we have Navavasa in the Lavender. And then we have Sele Folari in front of them there in the royal blue and katawunga at the bottom there uh they are in the mid blue and we've got the the two players who are further up here are both uef while katawunga is cybron so we've got cybron and uef on both sides but one seraphim loose cannon there in funk off in the orange so uh, we can see here that uh, it's no red for you has been the most expansive so far. Getting that mass point that's below this little cliff here. Definitely these cliffs uh, divide the map into a kind of protected home area and a, a middle area and uh, obviously the, the other side. We also got some uh, beachfront property here. It's uh, down a little ramp, but protected by cliffs. Uh, though there's no mass down there, so I don't think any of the players will be rushing to, to install things there, especially as it's low ground. You feel like uh, maybe not a good position to try and hold there, even if it is a bit protected. Um, we've also got scouts coming out for no road for you. Uh, air scouts, that is. And it's good to see some early uh, scouting that can be very powerful. Um, I did mention that the uh, the three warm players had gone uh, first land. But we do have an air factory out from No Red For You, of course. And another, uh, though this one's idle from It's Not Me. Uh, it's Not Me walking there, come out. So is Funkoff. Uh, it's not me has a bit of a longer walk to get to any mass points. So they've only just come out to here. It's not a very useful place to stand. Um, Funkoff is coming out to get some mass points. That's good. We've also got uh, Katawunga on this side. Who's braving the no man's land in the center. To bring their comm out. Though uh, as they've got a, a, an engineer ahead of them. It's really not clear what use the comm's going to be there for a while. And... Uh, over here on the far left, Navavasa also going into the the no man's land in the centre, but uh, kind of more usefully positioned there. Though not stopping to take these mass points, which they've left engineers behind to do. Uh, perhaps these four commanders are going to build up some factories that are a bit closer to the where the front lines will end up. It does look like we're going to get a pretty even split down the middle of the map at this rate. Though there's uh, not really anything to fight over in this central area, so uh, and as it's a, a little bit protected, perhaps we'll see players shy away from that. Uh, Gun coming out already for Funkoff. It's got a minute to run there. Um, they're, they're looking perhaps a little under-defended, but there's no enemies near them, so I think they'll get away with that. 
and we can see the uh, the disabled signs, no entry signs here on Sele's Mexes to indicate they're already queuing up upgrades to Tech 2. I think taking advantage of the, the rush distance here and the, the lack of early conflict to eco up. However, I say lack of early conflict, but what, while the words were already coming out of my mouth, there's some raiding going on there, and this has been pretty effective for no raid for you. And it looks like they're going to mop up this uh, hydrocarbon plant as well. And some interceptors also coming out for a bit of a skirmish. No, no blood drawn on either side with those yet. Um, this transport's coming out, but it's already been spotted. And again, just uh, returning the favor with a bit of raiding on mexes where there's no units. There's been quite a lot of uh, naked expansion across the map, perhaps because the, the mass points are so sparse on this map. It's really hard to defend all of them. And uh, I hope that means we'll see some exciting raiding as the game progresses. Also got a, a hero tank here from It's Not Me. Um, running past the main force of Navavasa to hit some mexes. Uh, meeting up with No Red For You. Uh... Also, a gun upgrade coming in for It's Not Me. Um, it has about a minute left to run. But Navavasa is coming closer. They stop to take a max. And this, uh, this ETA is not really going down. Possibly if we uh, have a quick look for It's Not Me. Um, yeah, they, they're out of mass there. They just can't afford this upgrade. But also, they don't want to cancel out of it because it's already 70% done. Uh, looks like Namavas are not going to push there. They're just going to anchor their position with a quick T1 point defense. But um, yeah, it's not me looking a bit, a bit vulnerable here. A few bodyguards. Um, it's not often you see the the engineering ability of the Mantis is used. They can uh, help to uh, continue a building that has already been started, and they were helping out the comm here. It's the best kind of bodyguard, a bodyguard who can also upgrade you. Um, it's it's nice to see that lesser known ability used. Um, very ambitious radar in the center here for Funkoff. Uh, though it's being defended by a point defense and Funkoff marching forward as they have finished their gun upgrade uh, some time ago. They're really hoping to cover quite a, a large area with their comm. Are we going to see them take down this factory? Do they even know the factory is there? Presumably with the radar they can see there's something there. They do, but they're, they're not going to finish the job. They really want to stop more units coming out from this area. It's got a full queue, this land factory. Meanwhile, there's some come on calm action. Uh, it's not me did manage to finish their gun upgrade, but they've been dived on by Navavasa's tanks. And they're really looking in a very dangerous position here. Hugely outnumbered. Uh, Navavasa does not have the gun upgrade, but he uh, it's not going to stop him. Uh, landing quite a lot of damage onto Funkoff there. Mantis is coming in to defend, but it's not enough. And uh, It's Not Me is in the red already. And uh, Sele is sending energy to Navavasa to uh, help with overcharge to finish the job. And it looks like this is going to be it. And that's it. Early bath there for It's Not Me. And uh, Navavas are in quite a dangerous position themselves there. Three and a half K HP. A bit of conflict going down on this side. Uh, we saw Funkoff there complaining it was 2v1. Uh, and there's some recriminations going down from It's Not Me in the chat. 
which is uh, always a bit sad when that happens. And it's... Well, there are two cold comms here. But it's not really a 2v1 if they don't push. The Tech 2 point defense here is uh, serving to keep them away. Uh, however, a quick push could have forced a cancel out of banana repair there. And it looks like we're going to see the PD creep over at this installation here. If we do take a look at the tech quickly, there's Tech 2 Air at the back here. And there is also Tech 2 Land. Here's the HQ. Uh, all of these factories are upgraded. The one at the front is not. So we should see... Oh, yes, here we go. Rhinos are making their way towards the front line there for Katawunga. And so that might change the balance of power in this earlier area. However, before that can happen, Funkoff has finished Nano Regen and is pushing out. Uh, perhaps going to finish the job on this factory that they didn't do earlier. There's a, an air transport has, has landed here. Perhaps it was sent in to pick up the comm, but uh, the comm has moved away. Really bit of a needless death there. However, it is beginning to look like Funkoff is somewhat overextended. They do have both gun and nano, so they're quite a, a strong con there. But there's a lot of tanks attacking them, and they're running back towards the Tech 2 PD. However, that is going to keep them pretty safe now. Ooh, however, Corso has come in. Doesn't look like they got any munitions off. Uh, Sele warning Katawunga back, back. You definitely can't be walking into the uh, the Tech 2 PD there. And we've got Ilshavos on uh, Funkoff's army. And T2 engineers coming up perhaps to extend. Yes, to extend the PD. So the, the PD creep is just going to keep happening and uh, take more of this area. However, there's there's not really... The next max point is down there. There's no, no real reason to try and cement this area. But they do need to get rid of this factory. It's nearly dead, but it's still churning out tanks. There's no reason to allow that to live. Meanwhile, further up on the map, we've also got uh, T2 point defense here for no red for you. Uh, which is dissuading uh, an enemy advance here. Nabavasa did push up following the death of It's Not Me. However, they, they've really been stopped. They could go further north and uh, try and do some raiding. However, we can see that there's already loyalists on the field from No Red For You. And so a, a quick uh, tech skip there. No Red For You obviously making good use of the, uh, the extra base that they've being given there following the death of It's Not Me to get up to Tech 3 already. And, and again, if we look and compare Techs, we've got Tech 2 land for Nabavasa. And I see Tech 2 air for Sele and Tech 2 land for Sele. So everybody on Tech 2 on the cool side, but the hotties, uh, we have one player at Tech 3, one player at Tech 2. No sign of a Tech 3 of Great Cube yet. And so as we're in this phase of the game, we see the comms kind of stepping back a bit from the front line, though uh, stealth going on to Katawungala. We also do see a drop going for the back lines here, and that looks like a T1 point defense is being rushed up. Uh, oh, I think with a drop of this size, it's probably not going to be enough. However, the loyalists that are coming in are going to do a better job of mopping this. And it looks like this isn't going to get much done. It did destroy a lot of the build power in this area. However, didn't... Oh, yes, no, it's taken one of the mexes there. Um, so that's slightly expensive. And, of course, the hotties will be missing the income from that mex until they can rebuild it, which is going to be harder with only uh, three engineers in this area now. Also, a counter push coming out from No Red For You. Really wants to mop up a lot of these Tech 1 units. However, there's quite a bit of Tech 2. Well, there's a little bit of Tech 2 in the mix here.
It's not been a completely one-sided engagement, but uh, numbers versus tech. And they're taking out some mass points here as well. Um, if we do look at the eco, we've got uh, 245 to 212 favoring the hotties. It's a fairly big difference, 20%. Uh, but there's, it's all still to play for in this game. And we can see that a few loyalists here are really walking through everything and it must be clear to the Chilis now that they need to up their tech game. And... Saying that, a Percy's just rolled off. Uh, I don't see where... Fra oh, there we go. Tech 3 HQ at the back there, but it does appear to be the only one so far. These are both still at Tech 1. Uh, and it's still mainly producing Tech 2 units with those shields. Uh, the uh, engineers here reclaiming all the T1 power to get mass back to build T2 power. Some strong play there. And the Corsairs are out again. There is a flak unit here, um, and that's probably why they're running away. They didn't seem to get much done there. I feel like with the n numbers they've got there, one flak's not going to be enough to stop them. However, there are... Oh, well, there was an ASF. Oh, yeah, there are some more ASFs at the back here, so that's uh, definitely not something you want to run your Tech 2 uh, into. And there's another drop coming out here. Where is it going? Uh, it's a drop of engineers coming to mop up this tasty reclaim field. Uh, always a good idea to get engineers out as quickly as possible to reclaim fields. More upgrades going down over here in this corner. Got Nano Repair going on Katawunga, who uh, already had stealth uh, and gun, of course. And the second gun upgrade going on for Funkoff. Splash damage is uh, really good against densely packed armies like this. So I'm not surprised they're going that. But are they going to be able to finish it before Katawunga gets there? We've still got a minute to go on this upgrade. Uh, building TMLs in this position. Uh, and Funkoff has run out of energy. Shield goes down. And they can't finish. They've gone up to four minutes almost on this upgrade. Um, however... Katawunga stopped pushing in there is not going to be able to force them out of that then. Uh, a bit of negotiation over energy going on that side. And yeah, the overflow has come through as it, it's not me, it says. And Splash is nearly finished. However, the units are right there. Funkoff rooted to the spot until this finishes. However, they're really not getting damaged that much, so... I think they're going to be fine. But the base is not looking so good. The shield's already gone down. That tank missile launcher, which had only just finished, has gone down. There's only T1 point event. Oh, there's one T2 point event, but that's not going to last very long. However, all damage is on the con there. And Funkhoff was not fine in the end. They were, yeah, 99%, as they say, on their upgrade. And they were not quick enough to run away from that. And so that's left this match as a 1v3, which is a really tricky position for no red for you. Um, they were the highest, uh, highest MMR on the team to start with. And we can see now the Tech 3 mobile missiles are coming into play. Um, the Loyalists do have tactical missile deflection, so that's really uh, not going to 
do very much. Uh, however, these are looking pretty dangerous for Sele, who, who doesn't really have units in their base. They've got a few Percy's running back now to try and deal with this. Um, a couple of T1 point defenses. I think even with the walls around them, they're not going to be super useful. They're using the transport here for its extra guns. And actually, that's doing the most work so far. It's really slowed them down enough, laid a bit of damage in to allow time for the tanks to get here. And Percy's just finished the job there. Uh, so a few losses here for Sailor Vorai, but the, um, the, the the little reclaim pile here is, I think, going to be enough for them to get back into that. And another uh, Titan this time. Titan's coming in here, but they're standing. Oh, but the Titans are deflecting. And... They're turning the mobile missile launchers into a self-solving problem there. That's the missile launchers all gone. None of them have T3 mechs, says Funkoff. We have better eco. Is that true? Let's quickly fact check that. And it is true. The, the hotties there are nearly double the eco of the chilies. One XP will win this, says Funkoff. Well, let's see if that happens. Definitely no red for you uh, is not stopping to complain. They're sending out raids and they're continuing to push. Meanwhile, Funkoff is uh, shoulda, woulda, coulda ing the outcome there. This does seem to be the main the main direction of advance here for No Red for you. However, not really committing their units. And actually inviting the spearheads to come away and to get deflected. And so they get deflected. It's actually quite good maneuver play there. convincing uh, say later to bring their units out ahead of the point defense there and there's a lot of backseating going on from the hotties fifty percent spider says Navavasa. I wonder if that was if they're saying they have a 50% spider, or if they're scouting a 50% spider. I see an air grid going up there. Uh, I do see more than 50% of a spider right at the back here. It's going to take it a while to get to the front line. And it does look like no red for use kind of stopped their raiding until that's ready. I don't know why they've got an army of engineers over here. They're going to claim the mass point. That's quite cheeky there, because they're very close to Nabavas's front line there. And it does look like Nabavas is coming out to meet them, having uh, used this one tank to see... If we just look... Uh, well, they don't know for sure, but I think they can guess that this is only engineers now. And the mass point is up, but uh, it's probably not going to make cost cheap as T1 mixes are. And these engineers are just going to get slaughtered. However, it has lured Nabavas's force away from their point defense there. But not for long enough to attack. They're going back in to safety. Mobile missile launchers are covered in shields here. And there's a lot of units that do not have TMD deflection in... Uh, tactical missile deflection, sorry, in this mix. And we just got the notification there that the monkey is on its way. It's got to come all the way from the back. So it's going to take two minutes, according to the game, to get to uh, not even engagement range. Uh, 
Now, I, of course, I do have to say this is a 1v3 at this point, so if you know, red for you seems to make mistakes like leaving their engineers behind to uh, get mobile missiled or uh, sending some artillery into an engagement that it really can't win. Um, it's probably because their attention is elsewhere and where their attention might well be is on these tanks in the south. Siege tanks coming in and maybe going away again. They've got the Tech 1 anti-air to defend them. Oh, and a sniper bot there at the back. Wailing on this land factory. It is only a T1 land factory. It's just producing engineers for the reclaim, I think. Yeah, just engineers. So perhaps not a huge strategic loss for Katawunga if that goes down. But the engagement is now here and... There's a shocking lack of T3, uh, a handful of bricks here on, uh, on Catalunga's side. Uh, Catawunga coming out in person to deal with this attack. Perhaps a bit risky at this stage of the game. You never know when there might be a strat snipe on its way to you. Uh, I mean, there is a bit of anti-air here. Not really into defending against the snipe. Amounts of anti-air. And then if we look up here, there's some nice neat lines being drawn in advance of the Monkey Lord's arrival. However, the nice neat lines are still being harassed by attack missile fire. And they're just going to frontally assault this firebase. Not really sure why is there's, there's not... Like, the firebase here is not really defending anything. They don't win anything for getting this. Uh, they get some better access into this area. But they'd be just as well off attacking down here, where there are actually fewer units and less PD. And the Monkey Lord here is uh, luring some units away from that PD to pick them off with the laser. And it looks like No Red For You has run past the firebase. Now, can they strike on the underbelly here? Uh, Nabavas's comm has come out to try and deal with them. Along with a few of the tech missile, uh, the um, mobile missile launchers that have been freed up, but no red for you is not being uh, distracted by the possibility of a con kill here, and not that they'll kill the con with the, the two that are left. Um, actually, that's beginning to look like a bit of a wasted run by. They took two of the, the mass storages here, but did not kill the mass extractor, uh, and they've not really done any economic damage here. Meanwhile, we've got the monkey being kind of run off by only interceptors here. Don't know why no red view doesn't go for an air engage with the ASFs over the interceptors. There we go. Committing their forces there. There is no chilly anti-air in that area. Uh, second monkey coming up. And we did just get a notification for a experimental on the other side, which is down here, and it's another monkey. However, since the Chilis have not really pushed out or done any attacking for a while, uh, you do have to wonder what they're going to do with this monkey. They're just going to use it defensively. Um, it does very much seem that the, the initiative is on the side of no red for you here. Even though they're playing 1v3 now. Um, the kind of streaming Tech 1 artillery in here, this is not going to achieve anything uh, like that. Um, they're trying to use their monkey as a, a standoff weapon here, but there's a lot of uh, missiles on the other side. And not a lot going on there. However, this one further down is starting to do economic damage there. And it does have quite a escort around it. 
and it looks like Katawunga is coming in to engage here. They're bringing their own monkey as well as quite a few T2 and T3 units. And they're really pressing in now. Shield goes down. It's just about to come into laser range. Katawunga's laser is traversing and it takes off some of the ex escorts. It does look like Katawunga has this. Chickens more than Monkey Lord make chickens, says Funkoff. Which is a far cry from a few minutes ago when they were saying one XP could win this. Um, though obviously uh, an XP 10 minutes ago or however long it was is, is not worth the same as an XP now. Uh, 20 minute XP, much less than 30 minute XP. Um, so still a lot of backseating going on from the eliminated players on the hot side. And actually, a bit of a uh, a bit of a breakout here from Sele, who perhaps has realised that they they can't just sit in their base the whole game. Um, not with a, a 200 mass eco difference between the two teams, uh, and they've they, they've broken out, but they're not really doing anything. They're just kind of running around and firing some tank missiles, not destroying anything. Uh, these units are looking really pincered there. They need to be getting out of that area and they're running away. They're escaping the pincer at least and perhaps they'll meet up with this monkey. Um, you do have to feel that sending in one monkey at a time is, is not the play here. Um, perhaps we'll see some uh, some mixing it up for no red for you, perhaps some artillery or a nuke. Let's just have a quick look. Uh, so there was a strategic launcher started here. Not much gone into it. Uh, there's more Tech 3 land being assisted, but it seems to be mostly engineers, perhaps building up enough build power to, to really go ham on that. A megalith coming up. That's probably better because this has been a very standoff game, especially with all the, the attack missile launchers on the chilly side. This kind of formation, oh, I don't know if it's the very same units, but this, this formation has been kind of roaming around, mopping stuff up for ages. And uh, no red for you has gone in, got in on that action with their own tank missile launchers, um, a lot more of them, but they're just they're not doing enough yet. Oh, also fire beetles. It's not often you see those. Um, and this is looking like the, the first really... Uh, the first push with any potential coming out of sailing. It is walking into a Monkey Lord. Uh, oh, and now a Broadsword. No anti-air on this side. Well, no anti-air on either side. So the Broadsword could actually just do a lot of damage here. Um, and I wonder... There's some scouts coming north to try and see what's going on. There is a formation of ASFs, and perhaps they'll be dispatched to take out the broadsword, but um, the, the, there is just a superiority for no red for you. Um, Ping has gone out on the broadsword. Um, yeah, Sailor's units are just walking back, but trying to recover as many as possible. Uh, a couple of ASFs coming up to deal with it, not committing the main force, very wise because um, obviously if no red for you does move their force in to defend that, then any chilly aircraft that are in this area are going to get wiped out. But if they don't, then as we've seen, those two ASFs are more than enough to deal with the broadsword. So that's a, a really good use of uh, small numbers of units there without committing your main force. And now, yeah, no red for you's just dispatch their entire air force to deal with this, leaving the center kind of unguarded. Um, they've built up a bit of a firebase here. So far this game has not been kind to firebases. 
Uh, so you do have to wonder what they're hoping to achieve here, um, especially in range of the Tech 3 mobile artillery. However, the, uh, the monkey does seem like the right answer to the Tech 3 mobile artillery, which is uh, rediscovering the mobile aspect of its name there, but not soon enough to avoid getting melted by that laser. However, Monkey here is somewhat in danger of getting pincered by this formation coming in from Navavasa. And it's, it's turning around, having scared off those units. Oh, uh, Corsair coming in, but getting wiped out by Sams. Uh, and so these Percy's that did get gunshipped are kind of... Well, they've turned around, they were falling back. And now they've turned around to try and take on the T2 mobile missile launchers, but they probably don't know. You know, they don't know. Well, now they do that there is a monkey lord coming to meet them. They are not going to get much done now. Because as soon as they stand still, they just get hammered with the mobile missiles. Um, however, they are burning through the monkey quite effectively. And perhaps they'll get a kill there. Uh, let's see how close is it. It's still some way from getting its vet. However, last Percy gets mopped up there and the monkey survives. But the monkey is very weak here. It can't really push any further. And there's a load more Percy's coming in this side. And I think they might just finish the job. But they have also disclosed that there's a megalith here coming in. Monkeys are pretty good as Megalith escorts. Megaliths mostly range there with their huge uh, battleship cannons. Uh, monkeys mainly short range with their laser. And so the combination is really good. Uh, monkey is still in the red here. And uh, I doubt it will be much better by the time it gets to any more defending units from Sele or from Navavasa. But the ranged attacks are really mopping up these Percy's that came out to meet them. Uh, another attack going out on this side with a chicken this time. And we are here just in time to see a monkey get mopped up. Uh, Katawunga desperate for mass, uh, perhaps trying to finish up another XP. Oh uh, yeah, they've got their own megalith being built. Uh, lots of hives to assist, but they just don't have the mass. Um, and a mass donation for Sele really helping to fill up that progress bar there. Mega 30% pings, it's not me. And yeah, they have seen this being built, but it's a lot more than 30%. More like 60% now. And with all the mass donations coming in, you've got to imagine this is going to be ready very soon. And there, there isn't a Mega on this side to answer it. So really the question is, how much can this push do? to wipe out the eco on the north. Um, Mega coming under fire, being very well microed here to, to walk backwards. You can get Megas to walk backwards if you use very small movement orders. If you use too large a movement order, they'll turn around and walk straight forwards, uh, which then means that their guns won't be able to fire on the target because they'll be pointing the wrong way. But if you use very small orders, they'll moonwalk a bit. Uh, they can walk backwards and keep their guns on target. However, it, it is very APM intensive. And in this 1v3, it doesn't look like you know, Red you can't spare the time to do that. And so they're having to stand it still and let it take a lot of direct fire. And especially now the monkey's down, it's going to take even more. And I think this is going to get melted pretty quickly. And these land factories that are going down are already in jeopardy. However, a second mega coming to relieve the first one, it doesn't make it in time. But will it fare better? The ping is out. And Sele are perhaps unwisely trying to run their units away. That means they're not going to be able to do any damage to the Mega and they are just going to die to the uh, to the long range fire as they retreat. Um, and uh, though a monkey also coming in, it's, it's possible that even if they had run straight into it that they uh, wouldn't have been able to get much damage in 
waterfall going down there. Uh, strategic missile defense being analyzed here. So perhaps the... Uh, oh, yeah. So the strategic missile launcher did get finished off there by No Red For You. It's, uh, it's still loading. It's got maybe 90% of a missile ready to go. Uh, you can see the shields blinking off there, a sign of power stalling, which is never good. The wall of scouts coming out here for Katawunga, uh, but it's wherever they fly over anti-air, they are just getting melted by those lightning beams. Losing shit to Mega, which is true. Perhaps mm, shit that's not very worthwhile, but the chicken is walking back to get out of range there. And you can see that the having to manage the whole front is really taking a toll on not, no red for you who's uh, left the Mega there to take in direct fire for a while. And that's a, that's a pretty bad situation. You really need it to be either walking forwards or walking backwards. And the uh, army of Tech 1 engineers mopping up this reclaim here. It's a, it's a very cheeky reclaim grabbing. It's very close to the enemy units. However, um, it takes only a few seconds for a Tech 1 Engineer to make cost when it's reclaiming, so it's well worth getting a few out into a mass field like this, even if you know that they can't survive for long. Uh, and it did, in fact, uh, lure some Stingers over Antia, which uh, actually has been very worthwhile. So I, I think the, these Engineers have made, made cost in two ways. If we uh, look over on, on this front, there's two chickens on this side, but they're walking the wrong way. They don't want to engage the Mega. This firebase is, is getting trounced here by the Mega's indirect fire. They, they need to either just walk away from it completely, stop building here, or bring the chickens forward to engage it in close combat. But obviously no red for you is uh, managing the other front right now. They're trying to turn the Megas around. They're doing the micro I talked about to make this one walk backwards. However, it's not firing. There's no use walking backwards if you're not going to fire. Um, and they are doing a reasonable job of luring out some Percy's from the base, getting them into range, and then with this crossfire they've got going on, just eliminating them while the, uh, the Tech 3 point defences here are being kept busy with Tech 1 engineers. And uh, so they're coming out here to try and build up a firebase with some shields, but um, their, their engineers are not surviving. Uh, yeah, that looks like the chicken's egg there. So one chicken got popped, but there's still two chickens in this area, so they must have got a third one down there. But again, they, they need to run away or push out. Just staying there while you're under fire is, is not the play. Uh, they've built up a line of uh, T2 artillery uh, to try and counter this Mega. And it has taken a bit of health off, but it's, uh, it's not doing enough really. And we see what looks like a Novax. Yeah, so a Novax coming out for Sele. So this is the Novax defense satellite. And it builds this little satellite unit that, that you can send off to the enemy base. And as well as providing vision in a small area, it has this big laser that is, is death to anything unshielded. And it's not me there not minting his words at all about how big a problem this is for No Red For You. If they get this fusion reactor down, the chain reaction there is going to be very bad. Oh, it didn't quite chain any of the air factories, but it's taken a lot of health off all of those. Uh, no Red For You really needs to get this shield up quickly. We see they do have a strategic missile loaded here. They need to get that going as soon as possible. Especially now their air grid is getting melted. The shield did not finish in time and has been destroyed. Uh, this overhead is in huge trouble now.
The Megalith on this side seems to have been dealt with, and there are two chickens pushing forward, a bit unsupported. There's a lot of engineers not doing anything in this area. They could be mopping up this wreck. That's 18k mass right there. Uh, there is loaded strategic missile defense on Sailor's base here. Uh, do I see a second one? Yeah, I see a second one here. Uh, this one is not yet loaded, so a brief window of opportunity that no red for you probably doesn't realize is there. Um, it can be very hard to keep track of when missile defense goes up and whether it's loaded or not and, and how long you have before it is. Uh, there is a chunky lad in the base here, the experimental mobile factory with those four battleship guns. Um, it's just the thing to deal with these megas, especially if no red for you won't push them in. The megas just can't stand here and keep taking this much damage. Um, however, having wiped out the remains of this firebase here, they are looking like they're threatening walking down this side uh, and again into the oh a second chunky lad coming out here one for sailor this time um great defensive units uh they're, they're useless in uh close range combat but for this kind of standoff warfare really strong Strategic and finally the nuke comes out for no red for you but let's see where is it going Uh, it looks like it's attacking Navavasa, and this is, uh, there is one here, it's not loaded. So it may well land if it can stay out of range of this anti-nuke, and it has indeed, and it's kind of gone in the middle there, perhaps they were hoping to take the chunky lads, however they've both vacated the area. Uh, it's really not done as much damage as it could have done, it's taken a few factories and a hydro, it's not eliminated this firebase. It's not eliminated either of the chunky lads. And no red view is left still playing the uh, standoff weapons game. However, they've got the shield down now. And these T3 point defenses are starting to melt under the megalith fire. And perhaps that will give them the confidence to push forward through this firebase. Uh, a shield gets placed, blinks back up, second one coming up already. Um, this mega is turning around, it's, uh, the, the fire's not quite coordinated here, there's one on each mega that they really, uh, there you go, now it's coordinated. And these megas are running away as fast as the legs can carry them, while the chunky lads trundle forwards, although this one not wanting to get too close there very wisely. Uh, as I said, the, these units are, are pretty vulnerable if you get them too close. Also pushing out with uh, a line of Percy's here. Perhaps they can catch up the Megas and, uh, and finish them off. So a bit of a waste of a nuke one has to feel there if I go and, and look at it. Uh, our more power coming up here. The Novak's still doing a lot of work. Look at all of these wrecks. All of this has gone down. A lot of power has gone down. Um... It does look like nothing is safe for no red view. It's Sat's gonna kill the nuke. Ooh, if they can't get it up fast enough. Shield goes up just in time, but uh, you can see that any more power stalling here, which is very likely with the number of lost fusion generators, any power stalling here is gonna be savagely punished. Um, there is one loaded. Um, yeah, like so. Really, what I want, would like to say about this is, if we we've spoken before about how it's a a one v three now, and it's that's going to be very draining, especially over the length of this game that we've had so far. No red for you's been looking everywhere, managing really two lines of advance, one here and one here, uh, as well as having to keep their eco and, and uh, keep building experimentals in their main base. Um, megalith after megalith coming out, but also countering a Novax when you're under attack from a Novax, having to look at where is it attacking? Where do I need to put shields? What do I need to defense? 
what can I rebuild that it's taken down? That's almost a four players APM on its own. And so you can see they've got three things to look at that any one of them could take a full player's concentration. And that's really what's the, the main hope of the south side here, that they can keep attacking on these three fronts and thereby make sure no red for you can't be fully effective on any of those fronts. But never mind him for now. This is Future Tufty here coming in to draw your attention to Katawunga, who already has laser on his comm and is currently getting teleport. So we're going to be seeing a tele laser attempt coming up very soon. Watch this space. I do have to think a second Novax would be super effective for Sele there if they can get one up. The engineer's coming out to try and reclaim these wrecks and. They are getting quite a lot out of it, but the, the, they're also under chunky lad fire the whole time. And so it does seem like the Chili's have actually taken the initiative back for a while. It's going to be very slow initiative if they're relying on these units to, to push out, but uh, no red for you really has nothing to attack with on this side. They've got one mega at the back that's fresh. Don't power stall with sat over you. Yep, you simply cannot afford that. Uh, looks like these mass points are going to go down. Unshielded mixes, especially T3, are just a very juicy target for a Novax. Yeah, no, Red for you really needs to do something beyond just building uh, more megaliths, and they have done that in the form of these two T3 artilleries. And you can see the shells going across the map, but what are they landing on? They're going for Sele's main base, perhaps sensing that Sele is the, the main threat there, perhaps just wanting rid of the Novax. Uh, however, a second one going up here. Lots of engineers assisting this shield to try and counter the artillery push, and it's really doing quite well. And Katawunga now teleports into the heart of No Red Fuse economy. He's surrounded by fusion generators. Takes out one, takes out a second, a third. Four and five drop straight after. For as long as No Red Fuse focuses their arty on this shield, they're not gonna get much done. Oh, but a power stall blinks it out. If that had landed in a different place, that could have been very damaging. But they get it back on. Um, also, yeah, they can't stop chickens, it seems. Well, there are five of them. And I, I feel that even the best defended base is going to have trouble with five chickens coming in. And it looks like Katawunga's air grid is for it now. Chain reactions going on. That's just dead. Um, they're trying to counter with Corsairs, but the, there is quite a lot of the Lightning Tanks here to counter those. And the Chonky Lad comes out, but as I say, close range fighting is not what it's made for. That shield is going to go down, and then they're actually very weak units once they lose their bubble shield. Can it make it back? No. Just got evaporated there by the combined fire. One of the one of the chickens is down. I mean, they've already lost one over here, I think. Um, splitting the forces here. Want to go over this? Uh, and Katawunga, still only on about half health, goes for another teleport. This time for no red for use calm. But he gets taken out himself. Yeah. So the strategic missile defense here has gone down thanks to the chickens, and immediately nuke comes out from no red for you. And that looks like a control K there from. Sele. So only Nabovasa is left, but he has a chicken right on top of him. And another nuke on the way in. And so amazing, amazing victory for no red either. So this was posted to the Forge Alliance Forever Discord in the Replays to Cast channel by one of the development team, Slado. Really good game. Thanks to Slado for posting it. Uh, reflections on this game. Well, yeah, obviously MVP to no red for you there. It's not very often you can say that one player carried their team, but when two comms go out early because of overextending and one player has to play for, what, 40 minutes on their own, 
that player definitely carried their team. No Red For You kind of inherited the tempo, uh, as chess players would say, the, the initiative there, very much on the front foot when they took over playing this 1v3. And they managed to keep up that pressure most of the time. They had an economic advantage all through the game. Really well played for No Red For You, keeping up that pressure, managing to keep an eye on two main lines of advance, one on this side, one on this side for that whole time, while also keeping their back line, uh, responding to the uh, the Novak's attacks, which were completely relentless and were just wiping everything out slowly. Um, you know, they lost their air grid, though the, the, the Chili's never really capitalized on that by building bombers or anything, or, or really going for air dominance. Um, they, they lost a lot of power. They had power problems continually. But they managed to keep it together. They managed to keep out a coordinated push there. They used the chickens to eliminate the strategic missile defense there and, and had that nuke all ready to go. I think there would have been another one loaded by now. No, there wasn't, but it was about halfway done. The nuke didn't even have time to get over the halfway line of the map there, but it was coming in and it was clearly going to finish the job there. On the south side, yeah, they never really regained the initiative. Um, they were kept locked in their base the whole time. They resorted to all of these standoff tactics with uh, attack missile, mobile missile launchers in the mid game. And then with the chonky lads in the late game, they never really broke out of their cage there. And they left the middle of the map. Obviously this area that they had a bit of a breakout later on. Um, and you can see there's a lot of unclaimed mass points here, but if you look over here, certainly if you think about the middle third of the map, where a lot of the mass was, their half of that middle third is all unclaimed mass points because they just couldn't get out to this area while no red for you. It was, it was, this area is the no man's land, right? While no red for you's half of the central third is mostly claimed mass points, right? A, a lot of these have T2 mixes and some T3 mixes on them. And really that's a, a big difference in a long game. Still good play from all six players in this game. And thanks to all of them for playing and for giving us this amazing replay. And I hope you've had a great time watching it just as I have casting it. This has been Forge Lines Forever. You've been uh, amazing, appreciative as always. I've been Tufty Indigo. Toodle pip.